I'm going to make one more modification to this program. And because I'm compiling this to be a 32-bit program, uh, that allows for us to use inline assembly. So we can you can put two underscores ASM, open and close curly bracket, and then you can just inline assembly. So if we move into EAX, ESP, what we're doing is we're essentially moving a pointer of the stack into EAX, and that will come right before the program rets. So it's after the overflow, right before it rets. So that should increase the odds or the chances that we actually have a pointer to the stack when this thing crashes. So we'll go back here. We need to compile, disable the dynamic base. We have to do that every time we compile it. Okay, now we're back to the ret. Um, let's see, we can see what's on top of the stack. And here we go. ESP, okay, there's our address, so let's step over. There's a jump EAX, and there is EAX. EAX is now populated. Of course, it has what was at the time of that instruction, that inline assembly, the top of the stack. So 19FF18. I do want to point out while we're here, if we look at, let's do a DB EAX, what's on top of the stack. Well, we have a bunch of hex 41s, right? Because we just filled that stack with data from our overflow. So we do kind of control and then and eventually we can replace this data with shell code and we'll get to that in a future video. But for now, let's take the jump and there we go. We landed on top of the stack. Okay, now you'll notice 19FF18, right? That was the top of the stack. And even though we're here, we're getting access violations. So now what happened? Well, now what we have or what we're dealing with is depth data execution prevention. So you might be thinking, well, why on earth would the stack be executable? Well, it's not with modern day operating systems through the use of DEP, data execution prevention. Not that long ago though, the stack was executable back when this used, you know, still was a, a kind of a new technique at getting into exploiting computer systems and computer programs. So what's happening right now is now you're seeing yet another mitigation. You're seeing DEP that says, oh no, the stack doesn't need to be executable. So if the CPU tries to execute instructions off the stack, then we get an access violation, the program terminates, right? We got a first chance, we got a second chance. So how do we work around this? Okay, well, there's a there's a number of ways if you do a search for disable DEP Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 7. Uh, the way I'm gonna opt for today is to go to advanced under performance settings, data execution prevention and I'm just going to specifically opt this program out, right? So that'll just opt out this particular process when it launches. So now we should be able to say, apply, apply, okay. Okay, now uh, again, believe it or not, there's one more modification that we have to make and that's now we have to go back to edit bin and we also have to tell, modify the, the PE file, that binary by setting the NX compat no. And at NX compat, it's the no execute bit. There's history there with just that as a, a bit for that region of memory to mark it as not executable. So it's it's essentially referring to it at a high level the same thing. And again, for the purposes of this demo, it's getting us to the point where we can execute code on the stack. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, and restart WinDebug after making all these modifications. You shouldn't have to restart the operating system though. So we'll get everything loaded up here again. Okay, and here we are back to the jump EAX. Now we have DEP disabled at the operating system level. We have um, the NX compat set, so we're disabling DEP at the, on the actual binary itself. Now when we step, you'll see we've hit the stack, but now we're executing instructions. And in this case, those hex 41s are actually inc ECX. So we're incrementing ECX. So it's basically like a NOP at this point, or no operation. We, yes, we are modifying ECX, a, a true no op, has no, leaves no modification to the register states. But in this case, you know, we've now subverted the flow of the program and you know, we're in control. So, you know, again, it's more or less like a, a no operation. Um, you know, we could have created an op sled and, and again, we'll do that in a future presentation, future video here. So that's it. Now at this point, of course, we're just executing junk on the stack. If we go, we'll eventually continue down the stack until we just get to an invalid instruction. And it looks like in this case, 
uh, e, uh, EAX is being dereferenced and EAX is being trying, you know, being moved into that and EAX is, you know, not a valid pointer. So we didn't do anything useful here, but we're well on our way now in order to now adding some shell code and making some more modifications in order to um, doing something useful. Again, the major concept here was just simply that we were able to take that overflow and do a pivot. We were able to pivot from a place in memory using a jump EAX to execution on the stack. And that was the most important thing. And that, that concept, that stack pivot is, you know, again, goes by, by many different names. We had to disable a lot of things though in a modern operating system. We have to have the stack cookies disabled. We have to have depth disabled. We had to set the NX compat bit in order for all of this to work. And now you'll, you can start to see hopefully that we'll continue to work through some of these issues, but you know, modern day exploitation, if you kind of fast forward to 2023, when I should have recorded this, um, there's a lot that modern exploit developers have to go through in order to bypass all of these mitigations, both at the binary level and in the operating system. That's not to say that basic buffer overflows still aren't out there and still don't get exploited. They certainly do, especially on devices that maybe aren't running, um, you know, a, a very modern operating system or one that's been really trimmed down, such as on an IoT device. But, um, you know, the exploitation efforts, I think, by and large now are quite a bit more complex. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll continue the series and move on to getting some shellcode to execute next.